If you will, go ahead and open your Bibles to the book of Joshua, chapter 4. The book of Joshua, chapter 4. We're going to begin there at the 21st verse. Say amen when you do. Amen. And we read together, it says, And he spake unto the children of Israel, saying, When your children shall ask their fathers in time to come, saying, What mean these stones? Then he shall let your children know, saying, Israel came over this Jordan on dry land. For the Lord your God dried up the rivers, uh, excuse me, dried up the waters of Jordan from before you until you were passed over as the Lord your God did the Red Sea, which he dried up from before us until we were gone over. And that all the people of the earth might know the hand of the Lord, that it is mighty that ye might fear the Lord God, fear the Lord your God forever. Amen. Ah, that's enough, that's enough for today. If, if I was going to put a title on this sermon here, it, 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 it would be, If He Did It Before. That's it. That's it, eh? Did you do it again? Good stuff, my man Todd Chipper said, same God right now. <laughs> same God back then. If he did it before. Yeah. Come on, let us pray to God. Yeah. Father God, in the name of Jesus, as we come before your throne of grace, God, we ask right now that the Holy Spirit continue to run through this sanctuary like a raging fire. Fill us right now in the name of Jesus with your presence, Lord, so that way we can hear what it is that you have us to say, God, that we can learn and take from this word, God, something that will strengthen us, God, that as we go out into the world, we can be the salt, the life of the world as you have called us to be, Jesus. God, we thank you for what it is about to happen. Lord. We have come with expectation for your Holy Spirit to move in the midst of this service. So, God, we thank you right now before anything else happens, God. We thank you, God, and we give your name all the glory, honor, and praise, God, for you are worthy, God, to be praised. Yes, Lord. Now, Heavenly Father, right now, God, I ask that you reduce Joshua. Yes, Lord. Now, allow the people to see and feel your Holy Spirit, to hear your Holy Spirit speaking to them, God, right now in the name of Jesus. Now, allow the words out of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable to thy sight, O oh God, my strength and my redeemer. In Jesus' precious name, we pray. Amen. 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 You may be seated in the presence of God. And us as you also may retire. You are a great God. There is none like you. You see, as churches, you know what? Like I said, I don't get to come up before everyone too often, so it's always a pleasure when I get to stand up here and get to deliver the word to, to, to people over the age of 18 every now and then. And, and because I love, I, go front, I learn everything that I need to know about God for my children. Uh, but every now and then, it's, it, it's a good time to come up before you guys. Amen? Amen. And this being the 24th, uh, the last Sunday of Excuse me, the 26th, the last Sunday of February. Uh, this month we recognize as a period in our history where we take the time to celebrate uh, the black culture that we have established here in the United States. And, and through this month, uh, we we the, the children have been working and learning a lot about our history, who God has created us to be. And 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 let me tell you, uh, I. I I get so much pleasure when I get to look back at our history. Uh, one thing in particular, uh, as you can probably guess, my favorite thing within our history, the African American history that we have established here in the United States, it is the black church. Uh, we are different in every type of way than everybody else. Uh, everything from how we preach, uh, how we worship God, how, how, how we praise God, 
how we sing musically, our syncopated rhythms in the music section, everything about us, God has established uniquely within us. Uh, and it's something that happens when it is that I begin, and I, and I never really understood why from a young age I've always been interested in, in, in history. History always uh, astounded me, for it was something that I learned from studying what happened before right. that would help me in the life that I have right now. Everything in our history, when you look back, there's not a single movement that happens without the church. Nothing, no event that has happened in the United States, no movement, no women's suffrage movement, no LGBTQ, all the movement, none of that has happened without the church being. It seems as if the world recognizes how much they need God, but sometimes we. Mm. I digress, I digress. Learning about our history, seeing and recognizing how God has kept and delivered us down through the years and blessed us has indicated a few things to me uh, that I believe are foundational elements to our faith. Mm, if, if, if you will, let, let's take a look. We're going to take a look in the book of Joshua. Because looking back at history, we can take it even further back than just the United States. We can go all the way back to God's text. Here in the book of Joshua, we're going to, I'm going to set a scene for you a little bit. Uh, here in the book of Joshua, as it starts off, as many of us have that study of the Bible, you know, at the end of Deuteronomy, Moses has died. God's chosen leader for the time. He has died, and, and, and the people have now, uh, are, are looking for their new leader. I'm not, not going to sugarcoat it, because we are going through this process right now, and if it's hard for us, it had to be hard for them. Uh, so, but God understood and knew what, that, that these things were going to happen. So he came to Joshua directly. Here in the book of Joshua, chapter 1, uh, first thing God does when he comes to Joshua is that he gives God, he gives Joshua the same promise that he gave Moses. Here, chapter 1, verse 3 of Joshua, and he says, Every place that you put the sole of your foot, that I have given unto you as given unto you as I sent unto Moses. First of all, he gives Joshua the same promise. And then he comes right back and gives him the same promise of protection. My God. He says to Joshua that there shall not be any man able to stand before thee all of the days of thy life as I was with Moses shall I will so shall I be with thee I will not fail thee nor forsake thee be strong and a good coach uh, that right there is enough for us to be able to stop on and shout because God is telling us that hey, no matter what comes your way right don't even worry about it because I already prepared your way of the state before you even get there. He reminds Joshua as I was with Moses through all those things that you were able to see. That how I brought him out, so shall I do the same thing to you. So be strong and of good courage. Ah. Now, 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 see, now, now, I ain't going front. There was a lot where we could just stop right there, but stay with me. We're going to walk a little further. Next, Joshua, he, he, he goes and tells the people exactly what he received from God. Hey, God said he's with us. He said he got our back just like he did before. He said be strong and be of good courage, and that it's time to go into the promise land. As, you do, as many of you know, this time before this, Moses and the children of Israel have been walking aimlessly in the wilderness. Uh, they have received the law after about being two years out, out of Egypt. But because of their disobedience, uh, their, their lack of faith, that's what it was. It wasn't their disobedience, but their lack of faith. Uh, believing that God said what he said, I said, 
He said that I had you in the promised land, but you went over there and sent some spies to see if I was really going to do what I said, what I was going to do. But you allow someone who doesn't know me as well to tell you that I can't do what I So God said, all right, you're going to have to walk around for another 38 years. Uh, you were so worried about your children making it. Now you won't make it, but I'll see your children too. Uh, Joshua is now getting ready to cross Jordan. Right before this, he sends a couple of spies because he was a part of the original group of spies that went over in the first place with Moses. But Joshua came back with a good report. He said, yeah, there are giants and, and, and wild creatures in the land. But I believe God We'll protect So this time he sends the spies back into the land. And the spies go and they go far as Jericho. And you know what happened in chapter 2. We're in the book. Joshua chapter 2. As he goes into the spies, go into the land. They arrive at a, 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 a Rahab's house, right? And they make a deal with Rahab to escape so they can get back. All right? So they get back. They get back. They get back. And they tell Joshua. Here, right in chapter 2, we, at the end of chapter 2, verse 24, he, they say to him, that, hey, look, uh, God is truly here. Yeah. Yeah. They say, truly the Lord hath delivered unto us the hands of the land. For even all the inhabitants of the countries do faint because of us. They ain't even seen us yet. But they heard about what our God can do. Let me say it one more time so somebody yeah. understand. There's people in this life that are going to come against you, right? And they and they and they got and they're rightly justified in worrying about what it is that we can do. Because if you knew as well as I knew that I'm connected to a God that can do miraculous things that nobody else can understand. So very well, Satan should be second in his boots because God is a good God. The spies come back and they get the new report and they let Joshua know, hey, we can do this. Joshua then gets the word from God and now we are in chapter 3. Joshua chapter 3, he gets the word from God and God is very specific in what he wants Joshua to do. Right here, look in your Bible. Joshua chapter 3, starting at the first verse. We're going to go down. He said, they arrived at Jordan. Uh, tell your neighbor uh, that we got one more river to cross. Uh, let me hold up. Let me go back. Let me pause real quick. Let me tell you, there was one thing that I love about the black church. Is that our songs, uh, the reason that they were given the word, the title, gospel, right? Because our music that derived from us often told of good news. Uh, the gospel, the word by itself, means the good news. So therefore, uh, I can hear my grandmother say, Jordan River, yeah, I'm bound to cross, whoa, Jordan River, I'm bound to cross, hey, Jordan River, I'm bound to cross. I've got one more river to crawl. But you see, that, 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 they come back with the motive. They, they, they give me the hope. Now, all of our music, they will give us the hope at the end. They said, Jesus, uh, he'll be waiting. <laughs> hey! And he's going to help me to crawl. No, 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 no. Every time in our, our culture, we had to motivate ourselves despite the situation uh, to remind us that Jesus was going to be there. On the other side, she see Joshua here is looking at the river. And, and God is giving direction. He says, all right, this is what I want you to do. He says, uh, tell the people that until, here I'm going to read the verse, it says, here verse chapter 3, verse 3 it says, and they commanded the people saying, when you see the ark of the covenant of the Lord go, of the Lord your God, 
and the priests, the Levites, bearing it. Then ye shall remove from your place and go out. This is where we get to our first point. Don't move until you see God. Understand. In the children of Israel, the covenant, right? The ark of the covenant that they had, they believed that what that the very presence of God was wrapped around those articles of, 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 of importance that they have set aside. That they believed that wherever this wherever this ark went, God was right there with us. They wouldn't do nothing until they seen God go forth. This is one of our biggest dilemmas. Because we are naturally impatient. Everything about our society now has become an instant gratification society. That I need it now and I want it now because my inside tells me I need it now. But yet God is telling us, don't move until God says move. What's up, my dear? God says, don't move until you see me move. Stay the course until God tells you. Too often we will lose track because somebody tells us to do something. I have now recognized that if God don't tell me to do it, I ain't going to do it. But every time I do it on my own, I mess it up. But look at the neighbor telling me, I got one more river to cross. So I need my God to go. Uh, here, here Joshua says next, here in verse 5, he says, Sanctify yourself, for tomorrow the Lord will do wonders among you. Here is where we get to our second. We have to sanctify ourselves. Look at your neighbor and say, sanctify ourselves. Look at your other neighbor and say, cleanse now yourself. Let me tell you right now, although that uh, we are not of the uh, Catholic faith, we don't call this period of history or period of time Lent season. In this time, right, we have identified that Jesus was fasting for 40 days prior to going to the cross. And so uh, I, I was able to, to uh, I, I, don't know, I don't know how it came up, but we were able to talk um, with my, my son about what fasting is and why the importance of fasting. And, and one of the words that had almost slipped out of my mouth was uh, uh, um, giving up something. Um, or, 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 what, what did I say? Uh, uh, before I said sacrifice, I, I said giving up something that it, it was almost like it was a a chore for me to do it. Like it was something negative for me to do. But as soon as I was getting ready to say it, the Holy Spirit says, fix your lips. Uh, <laughs> and, <laughs> fix your lips. And, and the word sacrifice is what came out. We offer sacrifice to God. Why? Why, 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 why? why do we need to give sacrifice to a holy and perfect God? Why is it that if Jesus came and died on the cross for all of my sins, why do I then need to, to, to follow this law that he, had, that, that he left before? Well, if you remember, Jesus said that I came to fulfill the law, not to destroy the law. So therefore, the punishment, the penalty of the law has been taken care of. Here, but in the book of Joshua, uh, you, you hear, we, we see where it is that God tells us that we are to sanctify. That means we can have a relationship but still be far away from God. Remember, what separates us, what separates us from God is sin. Right? God knows who we are. We have a relationship. But what separates me from getting close to God is my sin. Uh, here in the book of Joshua, if it is that I understand it, that God is saying, in order for you to 
see the miracle that I'm getting ready to do. You must first sanctify yourself. Church, there are some things that we got to clean up. Uh, we, are, we are looking to see God do a miracle here in the land. We are looking to see God heal situations. We are looking to see God mend relationships. We are looking to see people delivered from uh, substance abuse and crime. We are looking to see God to do some amazing things. And God is saying, sanctify yourself. Remember, he said, if my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves ah, and submit, that he then will heal our land. Sanctify us. Luke 23, Jesus himself says, and if them all, if any man come after me, let him first deny himself, take up his cross daily, and follow me. Church, there are some things that, that we can, you, you know what, uh, what I have started to see is that the church looks just like everywhere else. <laughs> That, that we look like everybody else but yet we say we are called apart we are set apart that, that, that we are different because of who leads us mm. we got some things to work on sanctify us Ah, uh, here God continues to give instruction here in chapter 3. And you see God tell the Israelites exactly what it is that they should do. He tells them, all right, when you see the priest, when you see the priest, then you move. Now also, let me be real, it also says that you also need to stay far back from the covenant. I mean, I mean the Ark of the Covenant, because uh, right now you're still full of sin. And you think he goes. So he tells you to stay about 2,000 feet away. Right? He says, stay, stay away. I'm doing for you on good. Stay away. You ain't ready yet. Right? And so, he, so, the, so the, the, the priests, they gathered the, the Ark of the Covenant. And the Bible tells us that when they got, when they got to Georgia, they got there to Georgia. Historians have found the place where they have crossed, the Israelites believe they crossed over to Georgia. That stretch of river is about two miles wide, right? Two miles wide. It's a deep river. Uh, 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 and, and, and in the Bible, it tells us that it was during harvest season. That means the river was at its highest point. Let me say this real quick. Oftentimes, God will allow the situation to seem like it's at its highest point. To seem like everything around you is looking bleak. That I'm not going to be able to do it. But it's only set up that way so that God can show you how miraculous He really is. That no weapon formed against you, that no river in front of you, that no situation ahead of you can stop. They get to the river at the highest point of the sea. Uh, and, 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 and He tells the, as soon as you take your step, here, in uh, chapter 3, verse 15, uh, as soon as the priest took that step, mm -hmm. the Bible says the moment that they stepped on the water basin, that the waters held up. Imagine this in your mind. It was almost as if the Bible describes it. It was almost as if God put his hand right in the way. Of the walk. The Bible says that the water went up so high that they could see it. Right? That you, the historians believe that they could see it all the way in Jericho. That means the water by itself had to be over a hundred feet high. The waters, the Bible tells us that the waters backed all the way up. Right here in verse 16, it says the waters that came from the city of Adam. The waters backed all the way up to the sea of Adam. Just so, just in case I know you might not know, the place where they crossed it, distance to the sea of Adam 
was is something like 20 miles. So God backed up the water 20 miles for his people. To, let me tell you that means no matter, no matter how the hard the situation is, that when it is that some people that are far off looking at what God is doing for you, that he will let the weight out of nowhere, God held up the rivers right there. And it says that the waters were seated all the way down to the Dead Sea. So imagine a pillar of water on this side, over a hundred feet high, and you are walking for two miles across the floor bed of the river. Because the God that you serve is that magnificent. I understand this. This is what happens. God tells them while you're walking. Keep one man from each one of the tribes. There are 12 tribes. Go ahead and grab 12 large stones. And what I want you to do is I want you to take these stones and carry them with you. Right? And so when they, the, as the priests walked with the Ark of the Covenant above them, or before them, they got to the middle of the river. And they stood there. This is why I pinpoint I need you to pray for your pastors. Because your pastor is oftentimes interceding for your behalf. He is often standing right in the middle of the river, holding the Ark of the Covenant, standing and praying for you as you walk by. God is saying, pray, pray, pray. They take the stones. And as they walk down into the river basin, they leave 12 where the priests were standing on the bottom of the river. They walk. And so 40,000 40, of them, 40,000 people, make it across this river base. God tells them while you're down there, the 12 stones that you left, grab up, grab up 12 more and take them over to the other side. And when they, they got to the other side, they placed the stones of where they were going to rest for the night. And, and they asked, well, why are we? Why, why, why do we have these stones? And this, and this is what leads us to my third point. Third point. Third point. Remember and never forget. Amen. Remember and never forget. He told them to make a memorial so that you remember what God has done. You know what gives me so much strength? What gives me so much motivation is not necessarily what God has done for me, but it's what God has done to people that I connect with. When I sit here and think about how good God is, and I sit here and think about my mother and how it was she was able to provide power for me and my sisters and my brothers, but it was that she was working a single job, or how God made sure that every bill was paid for in the house, well, how God has delivered my father where it was that he didn't believe in God all his life, but now he believes that there's someone named Jesus. How it is that I can look at my pastor and wonder how he could be here as a pastor, serve as a, 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 a on the city of Virginia Beach, teach all at the same time for two different schools, still come back, preach Bible study every week, still have time to go back to his family and do everything that God has told him to do. How else other than the grace and the power of God? Remember and never forget that God is the one that gives us strength. That God is the one that will see us through. That God is the one that will make a way out of nowhere. That God will prepare the way before you. That God will prepare every situation before it even gets to your footsteps. He has already made the way out. I know it may seem too hard right now. I know it seems like the waters are higher than they've ever been. But God is saying that's just so I can work a miracle in your God is telling us, look back the word preacher. and remember what I had. Remember Enoch. We came from a small town. We came over here with nothing. God has established us here in the name of Jesus. And he has prepared the way for us to be blessed and for us to do wonders here in this great world. Remember who you are and never forget 